Hello and welcome to the final of the seventh general edition. We started with 16 contestants. We saw some upsets. We saw some crowd favorites go out. We saw tiebreaker. We saw one of the best games of all time in quarterfinal four. And then now we are here with the last four contestants. Let me call one, all the contestants one by one. Our first contestant had a great quarterfinal, had a great semifinal, has been dominating his matches uh, so far. Give it up for Kanan Gill. Oh, hi. KV, pleasure. Uh, I just want to say that uh, it's been uh, a great fun doing this uh, quiz and, you know, I never appreciated the value of, uh, you know, just being serious and just sticking to the point and just answering the questions because really it keeps you focused, it keeps you engaged and your mind doesn't go here or there, you know, just stay on point and I feel like this is an, uh, this is an approach I'll be taking for the future. Uh, when I do comedy on stage, guys, I just want to talk to you about like, health insurance, tax, important things that could benefit you without being distracted. And with that, I'd like to call up the next participant. Could you please put your hands together and welcome on stage. This guy had a great quarterfinal, a great semifinal, and he will have a great final. KB, you know him, you love him. I like him as a friend. Welcome on stage. Never shy, everybody. Never <laughs> So uh, the film opens on, oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong meet. <laughs> <laughs> nice 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 welcome Neville yes like Anand said fantastic quarterfinal you won that you came second in the semi-final but you dominated that semi-final as well all the best finale both of you have been here now comes the third finalist he's been in the final so many times uh, <laughs> quizzing nerds just gave me a trivia he's only lost three games in the entire journey <gasps> Once he lost to Kenny Sebastian in Mela final. Then he lost to Kanan in that crazy quarter final earlier. Then he lost to uh, Surbi in the semi final. So he hasn't really won a match this far, which means law of averages can strike and, you know, anything can happen. Give it up for Rohan Joshi. I'm pleased to be here. Yes. <laughs> Good. Thank you for maintaining the decorum of this uh, competition, Rohan. Uh, point, point of order. Uh, the, why was it not put in the memo that we are all wearing the same t shirt? I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just noticed. Just, I, I, I'm deeply disappointed. I'm sorry. I I'm thought upset. I sent a specific email out saying, please wear black t-shirt or gray no. t-shirt if you're a contestant. No, so I'm sorry if that didn't reach you. Uh, no problem. We'll circle back to this after the show when we conduct our Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for uh, let's, bringing this up. Let's, 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 let's connect. No, no. Let's connect definitely. After. We will connect and certainly and double click on this point. But, uh, before, not to distract anyone, let's uh, take it back to Rohan. Rohan, you were saying. I was sorry, just saying right. that I was oh, just sorry. saying that we need to make sure that we have guardrails. Uh, yes, when we execute yes. these things holistically. Yeah, yeah, and it's very hard to get Tony Hawk for this. Mondays to tomorrow, I have to hear the same thing tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your input, Neville. Really appreciate yeah. what you're saying. It's not the direction we're looking to go in at this moment, but I'm going to hand it back to KB to give uh, thank you. Cards. My my pleasure. Thank you, Rohan, for the, that Coke bottle, huh? Really going for that sponsorship. Buddy, <laughs> buddy, <laughs> got your back, buddy, buddy, <laughs> got your back. Got your back, buddy, buddy, here. How do you guys feel there? about Frank Did you sense? know? Hmm, enjoy cola, I do. <laughs> we both, both of us have Yoda. Yoda like, loves Coca-Cola. Uh, and other oh. things that... Yeah. The habit that. <laughs> also habit loves Coca-Cola. Mm. I just have a half <laughs> bin. I have a Lego McLaren brochure, that's it. Which also loves Coca-Cola. Emirates. They also love Coca-Cola. I have had Coca-Cola on Emirates. I can. Yes, yes, me. yes. Uh, okay, on that note, first time finally, one of the stars of this edition, Jan Slayer in the semi-final, got one of the front runners of this edition, Ashish Shakya out. Also had a fantastic quarter-final earlier with Neville, quarter-final three, I guess. Uh, one of the crowd favorites now to win the edition. Give it up for Surbi Bagga. Hey! Yo, yo! I didn't get the memo. I am wearing some stripes. Nice. I'm so sorry. I sent it to your PA, Pankhuri. Uh, uh, I Pankhuri told Pankhuri me she was forwarded it to you. Okay, okay. Uh, so sorry. I think I got an out-of-office email from Pankhuri. Right. Uh, my apologies. We will certainly not make this mistake in the future. Thank you for your input. Just going back to KB for the closing thoughts. Yes. Yes, let's begin the finale. All the best. Kanan, Neville, Rohan, Purvi. Let's have fun. Uh, and let's do this. Let's do the final. Let's begin. The first question is to Kanan. Kanan, a door hinge may have made all the difference. Theories abound as to why it was X and not Y who first did this. 
the answer may have been the simple logistics of getting out of their dash. The exit had a right hinge that opened inwardly with the man sitting on the left X having the most unobstructed path to the outside. Y would have essentially had to climb over X to get out first. Just give me X and Y or just tell me what are we talking about? Door hinge. Uh, Kevi, I want to thank you for this uh, first question. A very cracker of a way to start off the finals. Just at this juncture, I was wondering if you were giving any hints or clarifications before we all jumped in. <laughs> if you want to ask anything, feel free to ask. I'll, I'll, see I'll just ask what I ask for a hint. <laughs> no, not as of now. Okay. I can tell you, however, Karan Gill, as a hint, if you want, that X and Y enjoyed. <laughs> okay. Okay. Coca Cola. If that is factually incorrect. On the doors, right? Or is the hinge on the doors right or like my right? Like camera right or like door? <laughs> is this relevant, uh, KB? If you can tell us if it's relevant, that would be a nice hint. I don't know. Okay. Who first did this? Hmm. Okay. Oh, is it uh, first man of the board? Neil Armstrong stepped forward first. Yes, perfect. That's the oh, answer I was oh, looking yes. for. I was looking okay. about. Looking at the moon landing, we are talking uh, about Neil Armstrong, yes. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. And there's always a discussion as to why Neil got down first and not Buzz. And this is one of the theories that Neil Armstrong would have was sitting there. And if Buzz Aldrin had to get out, he had to climb over Neil to go out. So, My yeah. God. First, I was like, do it must be a Titanic question. Then I was like, can't be a Titanic question. And first did this, I was like, okay, someone's trapped in the train, can't get out for 10th final. Yeah, yeah. And the blank was lunar module. So logistics of the lunar module. Okay, Kanan got Neil Armstrong funda, first man on the moon funda. 10 points there, which means next direct will come to Neville. Okay, Neville, I'm talking about a certain photograph. Okay, excess photo with Y. So there are two people in this photo. It's one of the most requested photos at the US National Archives. Once called a threat to American decency, X wrangled a meeting with Y in 1970. I'm on your side, X told the president, while clad in a distinctive purple velvet suit. Y also arranged for X, uh, who collected police insignia, to get a souvenir badge from the Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs. X's then wife Priscilla wrote in her memoir, the narc badge represented some kind of ultimate power to him. In 2015, the U.S. National Archives confirmed that the photo of X and Y shaking hands gets more requests for reproduction by the public than any other in its collection. Give me X and Y. Which photo are we talking about? X will give you six points and Y will give you four points. Why are they requesting the National Archives for the photo? I'm sure you can Google search. Right? Do they give high quality? Yeah, maybe <laughs> with a watermark. Yeah, they remove the watermark. <laughs> they, yeah, they remove. <laughs> yeah. Start, Made stop. with mimetic gets taken out. Cut <laughs> stock is removed. <laughs> is 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 why President Nixon and ex Janis Joplin? Okay, four points to you for why. Why is President Richard Nixon going to Rohan only for X? Is X Elvis Presley? Elvis Presley. Yes. That is correct. It is the photo of Elvis Presley and Richard Nixon shaking hand. Elvis Presley and Richard Nixon. Yeah. Four and six. Uh, now we go to Surbi for the next question. Right. Surbi, there are certain words in the English language that are used to describe specific feelings and emotions. One such word is shiviness. A shiv is a tiny splinter or fragment of something or else a loose thread sticking out of a piece of fabric. And derived from that, shiviness is an old Yorkshire dialect word for the feeling of discomfort that comes from wearing something. A word that surely needs to be more widely known. What do you think shiviness is? Shiviness is essentially feeling of discomfort that comes from wearing this thing. And this is amongst the words that are used to describe very specific feeling and emotion. What does shiviness mean? Or just filling the blanks. 
TV next. A feeling of discomfort that comes from wearing. It's is it a two word answer? So that, the second word is something that you wear. Okay. Uh, and first word is it just defines some, something to do with yeah. For example, if the answer is. Uh, Yes. <laughs> so the first word defines the word. First word is an adjective, so to speak. And that's the closest I can say. Second word is what you wear. So, for example, wearing a black t-shirt, black yeah. cap. Okay. For example, okay, got it. not the best yeah. of example, but second is what you wear. First is just defining that thing yeah. that you wear. Tight jeans. Something like that. Yes. Mm. Well, good that examples come from you guys. I can't. Yes. Tight jeans. Loose thread sticking out of a piece. It's just a general feeling of discomfort. Hmm. Okay. Um, a feeling that comes from wearing uh, bad underwear. Right? Underwear. underwear. Very close. I'll come back to you. I'm not revealing anything. I'm going to Kanan. Not revealing anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kevin. I never reveals anything, dude. You're telling him, Kavi, come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, you uh, said you'll come back to yeah. okay, on bad underwear. I'm going to say tiny fragment of something. Is it uh, like frayed underwear? Not frayed underwear. Like Going to Neville? Is it like, it can't be loose underwear because loose thread is there only. So, is it tight underwear? <laughs> I'll come back to you, uh, Rohan. Um, okay, in the quadrant of four underwears, we finished three. No? <laughs> <laughs> chaotic neutral, chaotic tight, chaotic loose. Wet underwear? Not wet underwear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this. I'll give points to Surbi and close this. Not 10. But the answer is a feeling of discomfort by wearing new underwear. Okay. Oh. New underwear is what I was talking about. So I'm going to oh. give points to, like there was no point going back again. Uh, I'm going to give six to Surbi and close this. Six for underwear and no points to anyone else because no one added anything else after Surbi. And I'm going to Kanan for the next direct. Scholars have theorized that the author's day job made its way into the book in the form of satire about 19th century innovations in mathematics like imaginary numbers. For instance, the riddles about a raven being like a writing desk were a reflection on the increasing abstraction that was going on in mathematics in the 19th century. The author was a very conservative mathematician and he found new forms of math emerging in the mid-1800s absurd compared to the algebra and Euclidean geometry he favored. Which book are we talking about? Is it Alice in Wonderland? It is Alice in Wonderland. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Alice in Zomaland or Alice in Wonderland? Nice, nice, <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Okay, the answer is uh, Alice in Wonderland, which means next direct will be to Neville. Neville, I'm looking at a two-word answer now, and there are four hints for that. First, there is some debate over who sorry, invented, I, okay, go for it. Go for it. Invented, sorry, sorry. Uh, there is some debate over who invented XY, but the first American patent for it went to John Harvey Kellogg in 1895. Canadian Marcellus Gilmore Edson had patented a proto X paste the year before. Second hint, more than half of the American X crop is used to make XY, and that's a lot of excess. America is the world's third highest X-producing nation after China and India. Third hint, it takes about 540 excess to make a 12-ounce jar of XY. Last, Iraqi butyrophobia is the fear of getting XY stuck to the top of your mouth. What is XY? Peanut butter. P 
peanut butter beautiful answer oh wow oh, oh shit i would have thought conflicts oh, everything you, you know what this is in school no when you used to play quizzing you would do yeah. arikey butterophobia is the fear of <laughs> then you would go oh, it's the it's the fear of having peanut butter stuck to the i'm room. always scared about like new underwear stuck on the roof of my mouth i don't know about you guys <laughs> that's just shiviness that's just your shiviness oh sorry shiviness it's just a shiviness man <laughs> Okay, so yeah, five forty peanuts are make uh, used to make twelve on jar of peanuts, etc., etc., etc. Peanut crop, peanut butter, ten points there to Neville. Okay, peanut butter uh, was right. The last answer was peanut butter by Neville for ten. This is the next question, the direct for Rohan. Okay, Rohan, uh, one word answer. X comes from Middle French meaning darling or favorite. The earliest uses of X refer to someone. who is a particular favorite of a sovereign or other important personage over time however the word developed a more derogatory sense referring to a person who does whatever a more powerful person commands x is also a very popular archetype in fiction examples of such characters include the flying monkeys in the wizard of oz the imperial stormtroopers in the star wars franchise and of course the the x okay what word are we talking about okay The the X, yeah. Like there is another work which I've hidden, uh, which is the okay, the tomato soup. The, the tomato okay, soup. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, nice, nice. It's nice to think that some people just know Middle French, like study or anything. Ah, who? I'm gonna take a second to think about this because I feel like if I pass, I'm gonna kick myself later. Um, also, so just that there is no confusion. Just forget that whole the the part. Okay. What I what I meant there was there is also a movie with the same name as cool. the. Cool. So cool, cool, cool. Just to clarify. Got it. Is it henchman? Not henchman. Going to Surbi. It's finally time to brag about watching this movie. Is it the minion? Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Oh yes. shit! Minion. Oh shit! Ten point there to Surbi. We are talking about minions. Minion is a person who just does whatever a more part. Damn, that was stupid of me. Only time minion. anyone has bragged about watching the minion. <laughs> <laughs> Surbi is right. Ten points to Surbi for minions, and I go to Kanan. Kanan in nineteen seventy four, an Icelandic history teacher named Sigurður Chats. Chat that. Take it again. Take it again. Okay, from the start. From the start. <laughs> in 1974, an Icelandic history teacher named Sigurður Chatarsen received a cattle whip made out of a bull X, which apparently gave him the idea to collect other Xs. Because hey, why not? The result is the Icelandic Dash Museum, which holds a collection of more than 238 Xs. And dash parts from nearly all the fauna in Iceland, including humans. The largest X on hand, from a type of whale, stands at six feet tall and weighs nearly one fifty pounds. You learn that, as with everything in nature, the diversity in this department is as great as in any other. Even within the same species, the difference in size and shape is often quite remarkable. Yar Tarsen told. What unique museum are we talking about? This when you say a bull space something, it's such a specific. It's such a great opportunity to say made out of a bull shit. It's yeah. <laughs> an uncanny way to say this is just a bull <laughs> shit, shit you are giving me. Am I coming up for bull shit? <laughs> uh, I'm confused between two. <laughs> Actually, I'm confused between three. <laughs> uh, um, uh, is it is it penis? It is penis museum. It's one. It's the world's mm. only probably uh, famous. They, they had reached out. Museum. I said no, no thanks, guys. <laughs> penis museum. Or collab. No, no, no. It's the only penis museum that we know of. Yes. <laughs> no off is the important <laughs> phrase here. The penis museum in Iceland. In fact, I removed the whale type. Coin What an unflattering museum. place for a penis museum. <laughs> the largest. No, no, it's gold. <laughs> no, no, it's gold. It usually. Looks way better. If this museum were in Bombay, the building would have to be eight times. But I don't think you have to worry if it's six feet tall and weighs one hundred and fifty pounds. 
that penis on hand is from a uh, from a sperm whale just to make it even more like <laughs> that type wow. of whale that was one whale. focused whale knew what it wanted and <laughs> self actualized in that direction in every possible way <laughs> okay 10 points to kanan for penis museum uh, and i go to <laughs> <laughs> What a great end time, Terry. End time. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when they used to just go to Gryffindor? <laughs> We've come such a long way since then. Okay, going to Neville now. Neville, I'm talking about a certain song now. According to Guinness World Records, X has the most cover versions of any song ever written. The song remains popular today with more than 1,600 recorded cover versions. Broadcast Music Incorporated (BMI) asserts that it was performed over seven million times in the 20th century alone. Although it was never released as a single in the UK, X was voted the best song of the 20th century in a 1999 BBC Radio 2 poll of music experts and listeners. Another clue: which song that was also the title of a 2019 movie are we talking about? See, it's KV, so it has to be a Beatles song. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I can think I know the movie also. If I give you actor and director of the movie, <laughs> then you know the title. There's just no way you don't know. Yeah. I I'm confused. Yeah. Between how many? Two. Acha. Kavi, can I ask you for a? Uh huh. Is X one word or two words? Oh. oh, I know what you're thinking now. No, no, I'm not going to reveal. <laughs> Kavi, can you sing the song for us? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just going to. Is it? Is it yesterday? It is yesterday. Yes. yes. Ten points there to Neville. It is yesterday, and not Bohemian Rhapsody. Is that what you're going for? Yeah, that mm. one word, two word thing. No. What a great way to ask it out. Yeah. Is it one word or two words? So yeah, yeah, only just, number yeah. of words is talking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 longer also, na. <laughs> That's what. Yeah, it's a very smart way to ask. Yeah, but the thing is, Bhimen, it is so much more difficult to sing. So you'll have yeah. fewer cover versions of uh, Bhimen. Yeah, no, no. Plus, I was sure it was the Beatles because it's KV. But then that also could be the problem that because it's. That's the red herring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yesterday, we're talking about yesterday, and of course, twenty nineteen. And I've written also Danny Boy, Himesh Patel. Yes. Who is it? Okay, now going to Rohan. Um, okay, Rohan X turned Hamlet into the most in-demand show of all time. In twenty fifteen, X achieved one of his lifetime dreams when it was announced that he would play Hamlet in a twelve-week run at London's Barbican Theatre. Mm-hmm. tickets ended up selling out almost as fast as one could say to be or not to be as the telegraph reported in 2014 the curtain does not go up on the production for another year but excess hamlet is nevertheless outselling the next most popular show which is the current run of a street car named desire at the young wick by 4 to 1 the show has even registered 214% more ticket searches in the hours after tickets were released than beyonce and jay z global on the run tour Hamlet tickets went on sale at 10 a.m. on August 11th, and within minutes, fans were expressing frustration at finding themselves more than 20,000 places back in the queue. Which actor are we talking about? I mean, who here has not been moved by Gulshan Grover's Hamlet? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is a performance for the ages. But ah, uh... This is just like a tukka. Is it Benedict Cumberbatch? It is Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes, ten points there. Uh, it is Benedict Cumberbatch. And uh, yeah, Rohan. This this is how exactly in dry run we we envisioned this question because we kept discussing this and I was like, there's no specific hint for the actor in the question. And I'm like, but if you read this question, you will only yeah. But somehow it was it was a very somehow he'll yeah. Come. Like it has to be like it has to be Benedict Cumberbatch. Like it's just yeah. one of those things. No, as always, I also thought Denzel Washington. Ah, uh-huh. okay, uh, of course. Of course. Because he was in that tragedy of Macbeth movie that just happened, right? Yeah. So I yeah. thought he did. So I oh. also thought he did some shit, and he is a theater actor. Also. Yeah. yeah, cool. Uh, so last correct answer was Benedict Cumberbatch by Rohan. So next direct will be to Surbi. 
Okay, this is Amul, which is celebrating 30 years of an iconic collaboration. Just tell me the two people in this collaboration, which Amul is celebrating. The tagline is many dash years together for dash and Mehman. Oh. I want two individuals which are which form part of this duo. The names of these two people. Okay, oh, many dash years together. Okay, wait. Is it Rahman Brothers? Um, I don't know. Rahman? Rahman? Um, uh, and the other person? Two people? Many. Wait, so I don't want to fill in the blanks. I just have to give you the duo. Yeah, yeah. Just just give, give me the duo. That's enough. Two people whose collaboration Amul is celebrating. 30 years of two people collaborating. Is it uh, Mani Ratnam? Mani Ratnam and Rahman. Yes, I'll give it to you. It is Mani Ratnam and A.R. Rahman. Many, many years together for Rahman and Mehman. Yes, many, yes. many years Classic. together for Rahman and Mehman. Uh, on the left is Roja. On the right is PS1. This is uh, Mani Ratnam and A.R. Rahman. Oh, you know, I thought it was Salim Javed that I was trying to make a pun. And I was... <laughs> 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 Many Salim years together <laughs> for Javed and Mema. <laughs> okay, Surbi gets 10 points for Mani Ratnam and A.R. Rahman. And I go to Kanan. Kanan, censorship rules throughout the Second World War meant that the biggest papers had to remain tight lipped about any information that Germany and Japan could use against the United States. The rules were so strict that weather forecasts couldn't be broadcast on the radio. And papers were forbidden from publishing sky conditions and exact temperatures. In an article from February 2nd, 1943, forecaster H.A. Downs explained that all weather conditions are a military secret. To broadcast that a dash does or doesn't see his shadow might reveal sky conditions to the enemy. Annual X predictions will have to be skipped. Those worries also extended to X celebrations. In 1942, Kungsutawney, Pennsylvania cancelled its February 2 event because we did not want to give our Second World War enemies any favorable weather forecast. What are we talking about? Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. Perfect. That is correct. The blank is Groundhog to broadcast that a, bro um, a Groundhog does, or does not, not see its shadow. We're talking about Groundhog Day. Okay. Karan gets 10 points for Groundhog Day and that brings us to the end of the first half. This was question number 14. Let's take a quick look at the score. Kanan on the back of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Basically, first man on I'm court. not on the back of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're the third, <laughs> fourth person to reach. <laughs> uh, Alice in Wonderland, 10 points. Uh, 10 points for Penis Museum and 10 points for Groundhog Day. Kanan uh, is on 40 points right now. Neville with four on Richard Nixon and 10 each on Peanut Butter and Yesterday is on 24 points. Rohan with six on Elvis Presley and 10 on Benedict Cumberbatch is on 16 points. Surbi with Mani Ratnam and Yaraman, 10 points, 10 on Minions and six on Underwear out of Shiviness, uh, 26 points. So right now, Kanan is leading with 40, Ooh. followed by Surbi. Surbi with 26, followed by Neville on 24, followed by Rohan at 16. And then we start the second half. The order now will be Surbi, Rohan, Neville and Kanan. Okay, Surbi, this is your direct. Favre thought she'd be starring opposite Cary Grant in X. In his attempts to entice Favre into starring in X, uh, a movie from 1933, director Marion C. Cooper promised you're going to have the tallest, darkest leading man in Hollywood. Then she says, while my thoughts were flying toward the hope that Cooper might be waiting for Cary, Cary Grant's arrival, just as I was, Cooper went on to point at the giant dash and say again, the tallest, darkest leading man in Hollywood. Ray recalled. X, when it released, opened to rave reviews and has since been ranked by Rotten Tomatoes as the greatest horror film of all time and the 56th greatest film of all time. Which film are we talking about? Oh my God. The greatest horror film of all time. Great question. Uh, to point at the giant dash and say again. Oh, we don't know what he's pointing at. Nice. Oh, okay. Is this King Kong? It is King Kong. Yes, of course. It's King Kong. 
10 points there to Surbhi, the tallest, darkest leading man in Hollywood. He was referring to King Kong. 10 points there to Surbhi for King Kong and I go to Rohan. Rohan, against all odds, this son of a poor blacksmith overcame class prejudice to become Britain's eminent scientist and in many ways the father of modernity itself. If you've ever pushed an on button, you are in his debt. X built the first electric motor along with the first electric generator. He also invented the rubber balloon and laid the groundwork for today's refrigeration technology. Yet, like most impoverished boys, he had received little formal education. Hence, excess math skills left a lot to be desired. In 1846, he boldly proposed that visible light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. But because he couldn't back up the idea with mathematics, his colleagues ignored it. Enter Maxwell. Believing the older scientist's hypothesis, Maxwell used ingenuous equations to finally prove X right 18 years later. Who are we talking about? Hang on. Is this Kelvin? Not Kelvin. Going to Neville. Zero Q. Pass. Passing to Kanan. Is it Faraday? Faraday. Faraday. That's Faraday. Muscle memory. It is. <laughs> 10 points there to Kanan. It is uh, Faraday. Michael Faraday is correct. Karan got Faraday, which means next direct will be to Surbhi. Surbhi, I need three answers uh, from you guys on this. On March 31st, 1889, X opened to the public. For 41 years, so from 1889 to 1930 almost, X stood higher than any building or structure in the world until it was surpassed by the Y, which topped out at 1046 feet. But just a year later, Z became the tallest in the world at 1454 feet with the spire. In 1957, an antenna was added that increased excess height by 67 feet, making it six feet taller than Y. So we are talking about three things. If you give me X, you get two points. If you give me Y, you get five points. And Z will give you three points. Take your time, try and figure it. Let me know. Um. Y has the most number of points. So that's the toughest one. <laughs> Why is the hardest one? Yeah. Okay, I think I know X and Y, but I have no idea what Z is. Okay. One second. Okay, I think X would be... Okay, X has now become bigger, so it has an antenna on top. Is X the Eiffel Tower? Okay. Any guesses on Y and Z? Is Y the... Is Y the Empire State Building? Okay. Any guesses on Z? Burj Khalifa. <laughs> okay. I am giving you points for X Eiffel Tower uh, and going to Rohan for Y and Z. Okay. So your answers were Eiffel Tower, Empire State Building and Burj Khalifa, right? Okay. No, 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 no. Just checking. Um, okay. So, is the Y the Sears Tower, and is Z the Empire State Building? Three points to you for Z. Z is Empire State uh -huh. Building. Now we need to figure Y. Y. Okay. The tallest between Eiffel Tower and Empire State. Going to Neville only for Y. Can I tell you X and Z? <laughs> <laughs> the same point as why I'm just <laughs> I'm confused between every building <laughs> oh, what's fucked my answer up is that this because X is Eiffel Tower why can't why would why would they do that <laughs> why <laughs> I want to do what? I'm taking 57. An antenna was added. So this is between 89 and 57. But we know an antenna was added to. Oh, you're trying to reduce. Okay, sorry. Is it? Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, pass. I. Okay, going to Kana. Say something. 
is is uh, why chrysler building chrysler building that is correct oh, the answer i was looking chrysler at chrysler building chrysler uh, building i felt our chrysler building empire state building i had a man always sitting on chrysler building not i feel yeah. not uh, yeah. empire state really i didn't help you by putting statue of liberty as an element i did in chrysler building in like cn tower and space needle so i didn't know okay so um, surbi gets 2 for eiffel tower uh, rohan gets 3 for uh, empire state building and kanan gets 5 for uh, Chry- uh, chrysler building chrysler. and i get 2 for fun points for saying why did <laughs> why, why why do that i've <laughs> seen the statue of liberty that america has given back to france is the game one they did over it's tiny they, did, they they gave one like 8 foot tall statue of liberty that they put just somewhere it's, just which somewhere they bought from staten nice. island gift shop nice <laughs> <laughs> in barely like a king kong key chain size king kong. not very big okay next direct will be surbi uh, surbi in 1899 when the british empire controlled x and y the brits drew a little map they said that y would get all the stuff south of the 22nd parallel while x would get all the stuff north of it mm. 3 years later a different group of brits drew a different map which mostly followed the 22nd parallel but not exactly the 1902 map gave y an extra chunk of fertile territory known as the hala eeb triangle north of the 22nd parallel while allotting x a rather useless chunk of a desert known as bir tawil south of the parallel 110 years 120 years later sorry 120 years later the border is still in dispute not shockingly x insists the 1899 map shows the real borders while y says the 1902 1902 map is more accurate both countries claim the fertile halai triangle while neither country or anyone else for that matter claims the bir tawil which border dispute i we talking about essentially two countries i want from you two bordering countries who are still fighting on this part andheri east and andheri west mm. <laughs> that Entirely is one... inhospitable <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants east <laughs> um okay is it 110 years later or 20 years 20 years 120 years it's a type <laughs> there's so many youtube videos about this very specific thing and i just can't remember the important parts from the videos about which countries <laughs> it was i remember everything i remember like you can go there now and claim that it's yours and no one will stop you because mm-hmm. nobody cares about it just the country that don't remember it's because of the pre roll ad you probably bought something from the pre roll ad no man like i have so so no interest in geography so every time i was like pata hai ye border hai ye skip 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 okay tell me <laughs> oh this is from that uh, half as interesting half uh, as interesting yeah you watch yeah i think i've seen it too yeah. okay i don't have to identify x and y uh <laughs> Yeah, yeah the I two think, countries. X and I think that's what. <laughs> I think that's what you're doing. X and Y is the borders. Are what the borders is? are the countries with the borders? No, but you don't have to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> don't just because KV is saying do this, do that doesn't mean. Yeah. No. I'm gonna pass on this one. Okay, Surbi passes. We go to Rohan. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna just answer, but okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Hang on. 
Okay, is it Jesus? I don't even know. Is it Syria and Jordan? Not Syria and Jordan. Going to Neville. How many parallels do you have to draw before you decide? Twenty-two. You now understand parallel drawing, like parallel <laughs> line drawing. Like where does it stop? Somewhere around the sixteenth, no, I, I think, would have been like, I, I think, think I've understood giving... parallels now. No, no, I think they're just giving examples. Kanan, like do you want me to speak on yes, so like, 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 Do you know the answer? I have a vibe. Vibe. I, I have two countries' names. I know. Okay. So I also know vibe. India and Pakistan. I also know two countries. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I know four countries' names. <laughs> <laughs> Morocco and I don't know Gibraltar. No, uh, Morocco. <laughs> uh, is it Morocco and Egypt? Uh, I'll come back to you. Uh, going to Kanan. Egypt and Libya. No. So okay, Egypt is correct. Uh, so does Libya oh, border Egypt? <laughs> Oh man, why I should have just given Neville Egypt points and then gone to Ghana. Uh, okay, so Egypt is correct. I'm gonna take one more round uh, with the other country that we are talking about. We'll start with Surbi. So basically, we're talking about uh, obviously a country that borders Egypt. And that country was actually split from Egypt in 50s when they got their independence from UK. Uh, which country are we talking about? Which borders. Do you guys want more hints or you want to block? Always. Uh, uh, this have... country is on south of Egypt, basically. So Egypt and south of Egypt. So North Africa, Northeast Africa. Extra chunk of land. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking, so Egypt is the right. Okay. Is this Sudan? Sudan. Yes, that is correct. It is Sudan. Sudan is correct. Uh, okay. Where is Libya? This Libya. map, right? It's on the right, no? I think so. We may be confused. Ah, okay, okay. Then if QM doesn't, then I don't think so. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So Morocco doesn't even border Egypt, dude. Maybe. <laughs> ha, Morocco is thoda either. Yeah. Uh, not, not after the parallel, dude. Neville, <laughs> Neville got uh, Egypt in the first round first, so five there for uh, Neville, and Surbi will get two point five for uh, Sudan after him, which means the next direct will be Kanan's. Because Neville got more points in that. Okay, Kanan is your direct. The legendary cartoonist Thomas Nast first used the Y to represent the dash in the 1874 cartoon called the Third Term Panic. This cartoon depicts the X as a lumbering Y about to walk off a cliff. As for why Nast chose a Y, a common theory is that it is based on an old phrase of seeing the why. Seeing the why was a phrase which pro-unionist dashes used to mean that they had seen battle during the civil war. So if you've seen battle during the civil war and you, this is a phrase that used to be used, which like when you said you saw the why, which means you saw the battle. Nast himself was a proud dash and diehard unionist. So it is entirely plausible he was aware of this phrase at the time. Mm. X and Y. Essentially, something is used to represent something. The dashes and Y, uh, sorry, the dashes and X are almost the same. Uh, okay. So, we'll take a look again. Legendary cartoonist Thomas Nast first used the Y. So, use something to represent something in a cartoon called The Third Term Panic in 1870s. The cartoon basically showed X as a lumbering Y about to walk off a cliff. As for why Nast chose a Y to represent X, common theory is based on an old phrase. The phrase was seeing the Y, which pro-unionist dashes used to mean that they had seen battle during the civil war. Nast himself was a proud dash uh, and diehard unionist. So it's maybe he got it from this phrase. What symbol or like what is used to show something are we talking about? We're talking about two things, group of people and symbol. Okay, okay. Uh, what is it? Old frame seen the why which provinces used to mean that they had seen battle himself on the partner. Is is it uh, uh, the donkey and the Democratic Party? Passing to Surbi, not donkey and Democratic Party. Uh, 
the ghost is why the ghost uh no not the ghost going to rohan is it the republicans and the elephants yes it was the other one kalan are yeah, yeah. it's got it's got it's to be one of the, the elephant yeah yeah lumbering why and like pro unionist were usually republicans then uh lincoln party basically elephant and republican party and not yeah. donkey and democratic uh 10 points there to rohan for uh, elephant and republican two points to me for believing in the paranormal nice nice okay, <laughs> okay. going to uh, neville now for the next direct neville this is the show that we are talking about x come on x is a saturday night live alum whose sketch show couldn't be further from that that mainstay sensibilities where snl is the mcdonalds of comedy this show is the hole in the wall place only you and your friends love because it keeps changing the menu with new dishes you can't get anywhere else it's fair to call the show outlandish but its comic brilliance stems from the simplicity of its setups and the deranged lengths the characters go to in order to stick with that premise uh on the right is a still from the show which show are we talking about sketchy behavior <laughs> <laughs> good answer good answer good answer direct banana basa available on amazon prime video never have showed you this i feel like i should let it pass and give you the points just out of Are, fact just, that you told me beta answer beta answer the question come on it's damn familiar dude the saturday night live would i even know this uh... sorry <clears throat> pass okay neville pass if we go to kanan i think you should leave i think you should leave <laughs> i think you should leave yes <laughs> that is correct no 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 it was the answer beta <laughs> <laughs> I think you should leave with Tim. With Tim Robinson, and the best sketch is that has this ever happened to you? Has this ever happened to you? The Robinson, and then you call the guy, and the two. Hey, you've shown me this all. The place, the toilet. Yeah, of course. I think you, to you should leave yeah. with Tim Robinson. Uh, okay, ten points there to Karan. Next direct we come to Surbi now. Surbi, around three hundred BCE, a surgeon in ancient Greece named uh, Herophilus. became the first person to formally describe x as a gland however the organ didn't get its name until about 400 years later when another greek surgeon and anatomist named rufos dubbed it the dash meaning all flesh possibly because of its lack of bone or cartilage what are we talking about all flesh all flesh no bone um i mean which organs have bone i don't know depends on how you're playing them if they're made from what skeleton <laughs> that's true yeah fair point it, dep- it depends point. on its cathedral you're in yeah <laughs> some people like bones i prefer nci <laughs> <laughs> okay I've, i'm confused between two i mean Four hundred. What took like four hundred years later? The long surgery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Someone just standing there. Isko kya bol raha hai? Guys, guys. Oh, the word means all flesh. All flesh also unsuccessful late nineties boy band. <laughs> <laughs> After all things, they tried. <laughs> <laughs> they did heavy metal cover. They did heavy metal covers <laughs> of all Saint songs. <laughs> Can't be. Kavi, is it the the brain? Not the brain. Going to Rohan. The pancreas. Yes, it is pancreas. Ten point. Oh, pan. Oh, pan. Nice one. Yeah. Yeah. Good Anytime good you one. see Greek and all pan. Pan. Pan will yeah, be yeah. pancreas. Yeah. pancreas 10 point there to rohan and i go to neville neville i'm talking about a certain tv show x went through 11 presidents in 18 years of in universe time president palmer played by dennis hasbert is the only one elected to office to actually finish a full term 
One president was incapacitated during an attack on Air Force One. Another was unseated when his involvement in terrorist activities was made public. One died by assassination. One resigned because of her involvement in an assassination cover-up. One intimated that he left office early because of Alzheimer's. Others spent time as acting president when another was temporarily removed with the 25th Amendment. And others stepped into the position midway through a full term. Which show are we talking about? Why couldn't you just make a West Wing question? I don't understand. I had one in pop culture. <laughs> Is it? <clears throat> I don't think it would be. Is it Handmaid's Tale? Not Handmaid's Tale. Going to Kanan. Is it 24? It is 24. Of course, it's 24. 24. It is there to Kanan. It is 24. It is uh, 24. Kanan just live it. Uh, did you have that? Tell me you had the ringtone. No, man, I could never. You had to pay for it. Nobody. That was only. I did the old school process of recording it physically. Somehow <laughs> transferring, <laughs> converting during the days of WAP. And oh, getting it. For two yeah, days, yeah. I was the coolest guy in my college because I was the guy handing out the CTU ringtone to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that edit pattern only was crazy. Yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, man. Dude. And you know, there were those rare occasions in the show when like something devastating happened and the clock would take away silently. Yeah. Like as an extra cue that shit had gone down. Like at the <laughs> end of the episode, that last five yeah, seconds. Yeah, this, yeah. This, yeah. Last yeah. Episode, yeah. Bring yeah. it down. Yeah. Down, down, down. Can't believe I did not get this. What is wrong with me? Sorry. If I don't, you won't believe. Uh, I was trying to frame a 24 question and these were my last two options. One was this funda, President uh, Palmer. The other one was how they use the clock in the series. Uh, got it, got it, got it. Nice, nice. Two. No, this is a great question. Yeah. Okay, Kan gets 10 points for 24. Going to Surbi. Surbi, X is the root of plants in the genus Panax and are commonly used in the cuisines and medicines of China and Korea. The word comes from the Hokkien Chinese where the two characters mean person, and plant root in a forked shape. The Korean word for the plant uh, for the plant is sanam, wild, nice. and in some cultivated. <laughs> the genus name Panax, meaning all healing in Greek, see Pan, all healing in Greek was applied to this genus because Carl Lino was aware of its wide, wide use in Chinese medicine as a muscle relaxant. Uh, what are we talking about? What is X? All right. Um. Dolo. <laughs> Did have some Chinese yesterday, but <laughs> just can't. Mm, Hokai and Chinese, where the two characters mean person and plant root and four. Okay, plant root and fog shape. Is this ginseng? Yes, it is correct. 10 points there to Surbi. It is ginseng. You're just looking. Talking about ginseng. 10 yeah. points there to Surbi. It is ginseng. Even I think plant is sanam. Sometimes yeah. I say plant is bay. Plant is still singing some old, <laughs> old Adi Burman song with blazer and all that. Uh, okay, Surbi gets 10 points for ginseng. I go to Rohan. Rohan, since September 2021, something has generated a swell of interest in learning how to speak Korean. As writers reports, the number of U.S. residents registering to learn Korean on Duolingo spiked by 40% in the two weeks after a particular event. In the U.K., the increase was even more impressive, 76%. Overall, Duolingo's Korean language learners total more than 7.9 million, which have helped make it one of the platform's most rapidly growing languages. Uh, oh. uh, what is the reason? Like, What happened in September 2021 that led to this spike? It's a squid game, right? It has squid to be squid game. game. Yes, squid Ten game. Point there to Kanan. It is squid game. Not to Kanan. Give to me. Why give to no, Kanan? No, no. Give me. Give me. Give to me. Give to me. Kanan has enough points. Give to me. Ready? <laughs> uh, 10 points to Rohan for squid game. And um, yeah, when I was reading it, the 
the interest so this whole squid game thing yeah also- you watch squid game and think man i really want to go to korea that's <laughs> <laughs> the first seems, thing you seems, think seems pretty chill <laughs> <laughs> you take the train home at night so no, this TV show question could have come to me na no. sorry ah? this tv i would have exchanged this happily with uh, rohan who also knew 24 24 yeah yeah so the other next, discussion next that's time. been happening is uh, apparently the subtitles in squid games haven't really done justice to squid game it seems got it so a lot of people in us and uk are like okay we'll we'll learn korean and watch it again oh, <laughs> just wow. to see nice. what it means because uh, yeah itna mehnat karke match pad leta to never never went full building uncle ha uh, full full <laughs> <laughs> पहले पढ़ना लिखना है नहीं स्क्विड गेम कोरियन सीखने लड़के को एक शो देखने के लिए एक शो इतने साल से कॉस्मोस चल रहा है तब क्यों नहीं पढ़ाई किया तुम इसके बाद क्या देखेगा बॉयज ऑफ फ्लावर हां क्रैश लैंडिंग ऑन यू हां व्हाट्स रॉन्ग विद सेक्रेटरी किम ओके नाउ वी कम बैक फॉर द लास्ट क्वेश्चन इन द एंटायर एडिशन द लास्ट करेक्ट आंसर वाज स्क्विड गेम्स बाय रोहन दिस विल बी नेविल्स डायरेक्ट the last question in the mid 20th century x x is a city x possessed its own set of discriminatory jim crow laws which with the exception of low wage service jobs kept african americans out of the growing cities hotels and dash even legendary performers like louis armstrong and nat king cole were forced to enter and exit the venues in which they were performing through back doors and side entryways In 1952 acting legend Sammy Davis Jr took a dip in the whites only swimming pool at the New Frontier Hotel and Dash afterwards the manager had it drained which city are we talking about is it new orleans not new orleans going to kanan is it las vegas it is las vegas new frontier it's hotel and casino and, and casino. casino all the all the blanks are essentially casino in my head it was jazz club Ah uh, no, not jazz club. Uh, we're talking about casino for Las Vegas. Also, nineteen fifty, it was still a growing city, so hmm. uh, like it couldn't be. Uh, Kanan gets ten points for Las Vegas, and that brings us to the end. Hey, this was also the last Vegas, right? Last Vegas, last come on, oh, <laughs> stop it now! Don't do it. Oh shit! And Neil Armstrong, the first question, yeah. first question to be on moon, you know, crazy. Okay, cool. Uh, let's look at the scores now. Uh, we'll start right to left this time. So Ruby had twenty six in the first half. In the second half, she got full ten for King Kong. Uh, she got two for Eiffel Tower. She got two point five for Sudan, and she got ten for Ginseng. So, ah, uh, Ruby ends with fifty point five. Let me just reconfirm. Yes, fifty point five. Fifty point five. uh now we come to uh, rohan rohan at 16 in the first half he got 3 for uh, mm-hmm. um, rohan got 3 for empire state building then he got 10 each for pancreas squid games and elephant and republican party so 33 plus 16 rohan ends on 49 nevil had 24 in the first half in the second half he I had 24 in the first half Yes. Yeah. Oh, 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 right. <laughs> oh, oh shit! And Miss Kedivar in the second. Oh, what a beautiful sentence! Oh my God, sentence. Neville! Oh, oh, God. You had twenty-four in the first half, and you got oh, no. uh, five. Five for Egypt in the second half. So Neville ends on twenty-nine. And now we come to uh, the uh, <laughs> man of the moment. The, uh, oh. the his first win in general edition, but let me just do the honors with the score. Forty point in the first half. Faraday ten points, five for Chrysler Building, ten each for I think you should leave, ten for twenty four and ten for Las Vegas, which means forty five in the second half. And what a great great performance! And we have a new winner of Quizzing the Champion, Kanan. Thank you, Frankie. Congratulations! Oh my God! First time. The king of cuisine. Kanan has had a win in Bistec edition, but this is the first time Kanan has won a general edition. What a great, great performance! One out of ten. Oh my God! I just want to 
I want to thank everybody. Uh, I want to thank you guys for your advice of kind of just be serious. Uh, <laughs> the way to be quizzing uh, champion is to answer all the questions. And it's just this advice. I didn't consider seriously before. And now I take it to heart. I'll be sending all of you an email thanking you for your participation in this quiz yeah. and uh, for uh, including me in your lives. And if you can send me your address, I will uh, send you a gift hamper. Oh, okay. Courtesy of uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Blue Star um, 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 and uh, um, Coca Cola. Um, okay. <laughs> I just want to go to Neville first. Neville, another another great, great, great addition. You were fantastic in quarters and final, and also in the finale. Uh, any any yeah, reactions? No. We'll take reactions now. This time from the country. Yeah, final me, final me. Yeah, yeah, kya hota hai? It's always like I don't know why. I yeah. oh god no but uh, great you know, Neville, I, I used to be like you I used to be like you I know <laughs> more. The problem is you, you 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 think you wanna you wanna be a cool guy you wanna play around huh? me you don't do, you don't <laughs> have you not seen no, me no. quiz Kanan <laughs> that's I'm telling you, you your head is not in the game uh, yeah. I, I, Kanan's I'll new self actualization words. workshop series starts next weekend <laughs> the tickets can be purchased through me Kanan will chat the answer yes. is you the whole time. Yes, winners so, don't do different things. No, so I don't do know. I just differently. I don't know. I overthought a couple of times and stuff. And the basic when you lose the basic shit like twenty four and all, there's no chance. Yeah. But genuinely, for wild card entry, I'm very happy to be in final. Oh yes, oh yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For yeah. wild card entry, I Neville, must say, Neville, like, like I, I had written WL one in front of him, like waiting list one. I was waiting. moment there was a back out. I, we all knew you will uh, be part of this. And then literally, I got RC ticket. <laughs> yeah, RC ticket. Uh, okay, then I go to the third, uh, like the second runner up of this edition. Uh, I, uh, Rohan Joshi. Rohan, how was this edition for you? Oh man, what a fun fucking competition it was. Like every match, like it started yesterday only oh, like yeah. with like going down to the wire for everything. Man. And um, as is the case with every quizzing weekend, um, I've knocked a few years off the end of my life. Uh, yeah. End of life quality will be terrible as a result of this weekend. Yeah. Uh, but it's absolutely fine. Superb fun. Enjoyed all the questions. Um, also watching obviously all the episodes that like of the other contestants that that crazy crazy edition like great man yeah. honestly like congrats Kanan like crazy performance like yes. world domination great, performance great. too good too and through good too good too good too good and also I mean so be Neville just amazing competition hated being sandwiched between the two of you <laughs> eight number fuck call sandwich um, <laughs> in terms of passing. And also KV, uh, thank you again for another. No problem. I, I love doing always. it. And I go to Furby, one of the like if if stars of this edition, uh, consistently killed right from the beginning. Uh, fantastic quarterfinal, fantastic uh, uh, semi-final. Was ended one point ahead of Rohan in the semi-final, and again ended one point five point yeah. ahead of Rohan <laughs> in the final. What great yeah. crack from King Kong to. Uh, what uh, happens when you wake up well rested, Rohan? I guess crazy. I just not not a thing I know. Not a thing I know. <laughs> but Surbi, how was your your edition? This was your first final, and first uh, final. and thank you. You've been a part of this right from the first edition. How did it feel this time? Very insane to like come to the finale and everything. Uh, so it progressively gets harder and harder and now I'm sure like the next few times if I'm on the quiz I'll read up I'll listen to all the Beatles and I'll read up on the South African cricketers that's that's one way to and watch all of 24 <laughs> oh yes <laughs> okay. and last but not the least we'll go to the winner again Kanan fantastic fantastic you were part of that quarter final that was uh, that was the best match of all time <laughs> <laughs> go on, go. And Sorry, it's another. It's a Derek O'Brien. You okay, okay. And you were part of a crazy semi-final, and then you were part of a all-star finale, and you won with like a very, very like you won with a considerable margin. It wasn't close to at the end. Like by the time last three four questions were left, I think it was quite clear that you are winning this edition. Uh, so Kanan, massive shout out to you, of course. Any last thoughts before we end this edition? Just want to thank you, KV, for once again uh, just thrilling us uh, two times this month. First with pop culture, now with this. Mm -hmm. uh, thank also to Angshuman Das, who has uh, yeah. whose name I read on the slide. Great yeah. job, Angshuman. 
<laughs> Just remember, if you buckle down and be serious, anything is possible. Yes, thank you, Kanan. Maybe, maybe you I have a suggestion it. for next uh, thing. Yeah. You should also have most stupid answer award. <laughs> I think I've taken that for doctors in in the in in in, 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 in the quarter uh, instead, instead, instead of Doctor Martin Luther King, I said Doctor Phil. So I feel like I, I that's me. <laughs> oh, I thought uh, I would I would win it for statue of liberty. <laughs> <laughs> I will now give fun participant. Thank you for reminding Srimai. Kanan had uh, nine points there. Neville had eight points there. Wow. So hey. had three. Rohan had eight points there again. So Kanan wins by a very, very small one. He wins the most fun participant as well. Uh, Kanan, congratulations. Complete again. domination. Learning can be fun. Learning can Learning be fun. <laughs> the serious Kanan has won the most fun parties. I imagine what <laughs> usual. Kanan would have done. You must but thank have you. Uh, yes. Yes. Not by juice. Not by juice. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, once again, to everyone working behind the scene, everyone from Insider, from OML, uh, of course, to Srimoy for being my comrade throughout all this at every stage. Um, all the participants, all 16, I don't know how many of you are watching it, but all 16 of you, I always say I'm grateful that you guys take out time for this. Everyone in the audience, this is the, like, I still can't believe you're taking out time throughout the weekend and watching quizzes at home post lockdown. Thank you so much for that. And yeah, generally, thank you to everyone. Oh. Have fun. Keep learning. Let's have fun. Bye bye. Please keep, uh, keep watching quizzing. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you. Guys. Thank bye. you. Bye. Thank, thank you for watching. Good night. Thank you, bye. Toodles.